Well, I don't know so much. It's a new offense, you know, that they're, you know, operating in, and we'll have to, you know, prepare ourselves for for that uh, first of all, and um, you know, whether it is you know CJ or or Davis, you know, we'll we'll see, and we'll have to understand that, uh, you know, would imagine that the plays are going to be somewhat, the concepts are going to be somewhat similar, and then, you know, we'll have to go about defending them. You know, whoever's out there and, and uh, they, the, how explosive they've been and, and everything that they can do. Mike, speaking of that explosiveness, I mean, apart from last week, they have been able to generate a lot of explosive pass plays. What does it, what do you guys need to do to make sure that they don't take the top off the, the defense? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think it's just all about continuing to, to mix, you know, the coverages and to mix um, the skies and be sound and, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, they, they are, they're tied for first in explosive pass play. So that's, um, that's a huge challenge. I think that the, you know, the guys that are rushing obviously play a part in that as well. Um, you know, you can't just sit there in one coverage, um, show them the look. They do a nice job mixing in, you know, the play action game, you know, and being able to move the quarterback into different spots. And, and he does a nice job keeping his eyes you know, downfield and, and stepping up. Um, so when they've been able to, to protect them uh, in that first and second down, those second down, first and second down windows, you know, they've been able to find spaces and different concepts that that, uh, that they work. I know you guys <clears throat> preach move on, you know, 24 hour mm-hmm. rule, that sort of thing. But after such an emotional win, how do you get everybody's feet kind of back on the ground and prepared for this week? Um, you know, I think that's all, you know, just trying to bring them in here a little bit later today and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, touch on the game briefly. But then, uh, like you said, turn the page and, you know, be excited about the opportunity to, to get back home, to be in the division, um, you know, and build, you know, just try to build off of uh, all the good things that we did and, uh, and start our preparation and understand that, uh, you know, just just one week, and it was it was a big week for us. Uh, but you know, there's another challenge ahead of us uh, this week in the division. We gotta we gotta get a win in the division. What's, what's the cha- I guess what's the balance like, Mike, in trying to you know get some speed in, get some work in and practice, but also not try to overdo it coming on a short week. Yeah, late the in the season. season, you know, Jimmy, I think that just being able to to find uh, the details and um, execution and, and game plan, you know, it'll be a different different scheme that we're preparing for. So, you know, trying to get as many different looks of that as we can with the plays. And so it'll be a good challenge. We'll probably, you know, try to ramp up as the week goes on. There won't be much today, um, just from where we're at from a, you know, health standpoint and a recovery and, you know, being mid-December. You talked about the plan going into the last one for Brunswick. Uh, with, with four left, is there any concern that, that one of your key guys up front kind of worn down? No, no. I mean, I think that's just part of this league, and you know, give give Brunny a lot of credit for for battling and continue to to push, just like you know a lot of other guys that we have that uh, you know it's a long season that have been out there every week and that have been trying to play hard. And you saw Daniel, you know, out in, out in front of some of those screens that were. You know, huge for us late in the game, and you know, did a nice job a couple of times with Dylan passing off games and and being able to to build a pocket. So, you know, I know Brunny, um, you know, is gonna you know continue to prepare and, and battle and and be ready to go on Sunday. From your perspective, how have you seen that relationship between Will Levis and, and DeAndre Hopkins? How has that evolved? Um, yeah, I think that there's just. Um, you know, they, that relationship is critical, you know, I think between a, a veteran wide receiver and a, and a young quarterback. It's, um, you know, Hop's played with a lot of quarterbacks and uh, they all talk different, they throw it different. And, you know, ultimately that, that you have to, uh, to be on the same page. And you can see that, you know, whether it was, you know, a situation a couple weeks ago of, hey, I thought he was doing this, I thought he was doing that to uh, some of the other um, examples that, that of being on the same page and having a lot of trust in them and, and being able to put the ball in places where, where Hop can make it. And so I think that that's, that's grown and they continue to, to build that. Do you 
like being a little harsh with things like fining a guy 13 grand for a gesture that, that nobody even really seemed to notice during the course of a game and stuff like that seems to be on the rise. I mean, that's, that's the, you know, that's, that's how they, you know, again, want to try to police some of those things and have accountability for, for actions that happen uh, during the game, whether they're seen by us as coaches or by our fans, you know, player and everybody has a right to to appeal those you know that that's kind of what it is it's just try to continue to do things that that don't hurt the team and lead to penalties you prefer when it results in a fine as opposed to a penalty i don't have a preference i guess uh, lost in some of the shuffle from miami tyler made his debut huh. on sunday did you get a chance to watch that game at all and i mean just how crazy of an experience was that this weekend uh, it was, it was, it was, it was great. You know, I'm happy for him that he prepared. I tell him same thing. I tell our guys that, uh, you know, you're one play away once you get activated. And uh, I know he's been working extremely hard. And uh, you know, I don't know where it goes from here, but you know, went in and you know, got to see a couple plays before we took off. Any critique of the tape? <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, that's not for me to critique. I. Uh, you know, I'm happy that he got an opportunity. You hate to lose Kyle, but you, you got, uh, I guess, Coburn and Bohan in. What, what's, what do you know about those guys and what will their kind of role uh, be? Yeah, guys that we've watched, you know, throughout the course of the year and, you know, look to add some, some young players um, at this point in time. And, you know, both interior defensive linemen that can give us, um, you know, have played, um, you know, Q has been active three games and you know, has played, you know, probably 25 plays a, a game in three games. And so, you know, big body, you know, looked like he played with decent pad level and you know, excited to work with, with him and, and Keandre. Christian, was there a setback of any kind that landed him on IR or was it just kind of processing through the original injury and figuring out when he could go? Yeah, it was just an original injury. How disappointed are you for him that it's season ending and you know maybe even ending his time here? Well, I don't know about any of that other than just disappointed that you know he um, he won't be able to be with us or help us, and uh, you know just unfortunate. And uh, you know I want all our everybody that's here that you know want him to be healthy and want him to play and want him to help us, and like that's that's my hope. And, uh, you know, I know he's disappointed and, uh, and we're disappointed for him, just like Pecco. You know what I mean? These guys put a lot into it and they, they, they play hard. And it's unfortunate when, you know, I know that they're not looking for a way out. Like neither of those guys are looking for a way out. They just, they got injured and, um, you know, got to, got to create a roster spot. And so, you know, I don't, even if we, didn't need the spot. I don't, neither of those guys would have been back uh, anytime soon. With Traylon Burks, now that he's healthy, I saw you try to get him involved early mm -hmm. last week. But I mean, is there something that could be done to get him just more in the flow well, of the game? Yeah, I mean, it's just sometimes that the ball, you know, uh, you know, got to be able to find you. I mean, he was running. I mean, he created Hop's explosive game there at the end. I mean, he's rolling through there, and you know, if they come off of him and they take Hop, then. You know, I know that that Will's gonna to let that ball go, and so, you know, I think there's some of those things that um, don't lead to catches, but that are still making the play. You know, it's like defensive lineman; you can you can make the play without making a tackle. And you know, I know that that doesn't sound great for a receiver, but you know, a big big guy that's rolling through, um, you know, the middle of the field that's taking coverage with them, that's creating, you know. Hop, who is our most targeted player, you know, allow him to be wide open. That's that's a that's a you know big um, you know factor in how why that play was successful. Do you need more those than small wins? Like, do you use those when you talk to? Yeah, we showed person? we showed a team. We show everybody, you know. And so, you know, the ball is going to find him, and you know, it's going to continue to work, and he's going to continue to, you know, we hit some screens. You know, what I mean, we had you know, so it wasn't like, you know. 
there was a, a ton of ops. You know, I mean, we created some things on third down that just, you know, like the matchup with, with Tajay and where we were and, you know, being able to get the ball in some of those screens that created those those X plays. And, you know, I, I'm confident that those opportunities will, you know, continue to come as he works and is back out there. In 46 snaps, like what kind of balance between clear out routes and blocking for screens? No, those aren't, those aren't clear expect. outs or screens. I'm just saying we called the screen. Like we're not, you know what I mean? Like we, we're, we're not just going to call plays for, you know, it just it doesn't work that way. Like, hey, we're just going to turn, raise up, and throw it to, to trailing. And and to clear out, you know, we've had many, many routes, um, and, and it's not a it's not a clear out. You know, what I mean, it's being able to read the post safety or the quarter safety. And if they stay high, well, then we're we're not going to throw, you know, to the guy that's taken two guys, uh, you know, through through the through the post. So um, I don't want you to think that we're just sending them on, you know, maybe we try to go up, you know, take a match up on third down and long and, you know, wasn't able to come down with it. But we're, we're going to take chances. We, we know um, the skill set that he has and he's going to help us and, and we'll go from there. I understand you're going to like force, force things to him, but over the course of a game, most good receivers in 46 snaps <laughs> find some targets or find more targets generally, don't they? Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to continue to target. Um, you know, if it's a two-man concept, and, and, you know, he's in the game, the quarterback's going to read it out. You know, I just – he's working hard and he's going to be out there and uh, confident that we'll – you know, he'll help us. How well do you know D'Amico, Ryan's and – you know, what style played maybe is similar to how you see it as a defensive coach as well? I, I know him, I think, well. I know, his, you know, who he is. I know what he believes in. I know the type of um, teammate that he was and the type of leader that he was as a player. You know, we've spoken um, at different points in time in my, you know, coaching career and in his now, you know, very good coaching career. Um, you know they're sound. They play fast. They're, they're physical. They 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 attack, and um, you know they, it'll be a, you know great challenge to to be able to block you know not only the front but the the, the linebackers that run and flow fast. They got good safeties, uh, good tacklers, and uh, you know, they very good special teams unit, obviously. And you know we know how well the offense has been playing. How has Traylon done with kind of that? concept that you said right every receiver wants to catch the ball and just embracing the idea of I can make a play without the ball coming my I think he has you know I mean and again it's our job to to, to show him those things and you know then when you get opportunities you gotta you know make the most of his opportunities I mean we you know the quarterback decides where he wants to throw the ball you know through a slant to hop I wish he'd have come over here and thrown it to the other side and that's you know kind of how it goes but um you know, all in all, just we, we have to be more efficient, have less self-inflicted wounds. Um, you could see when we get into the rhythm of drives and the flow of drives, um, you know, we, we do much better. And the better that we can run the football, the better that we can, you know, create opportunities in a play-action pass game, which then now uh, allows for those receivers to, to work the different concepts and, and, and have success down the field. These games always meant more to Amy's dad. Is there any sense with the, with the uniform and the and and the move and and all of that that there's specialness to the rivalry with them? Well, I mean, there's division game. I think it's a unique um, situation, you know, having been from where we, you know, came from and and how we ended up here, and you know, the uniforms will be, you know, a nice. You know, touch to that and everything else, but this is about, you know, our, our guys uh, preparing for, for for the Texans, and and you know, we, we've had some great matchups, you know, since I've been here. Tough games, physical games, division games. So, um, yeah, there's a lot that is around that, Paul. I think, but most importantly, it's about, you know, trying to get a win in the division. You hinted that you probably wear a, a bumps Phillips style I, cowboy hat on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I probably got caught up in the moment. 
vote in favor. You voted. How about I just wear one to the game? Will you do that? I'll wear one to the game on that little walk up where Teron takes all the pictures. You already have you already have one picked out? No, I don't. No. I don't Shopping need one. spree? Who's not practicing? Please. Mm. Raider won't be practicing. Uh Phillips won't be practicing. Um, Tart won't be practicing. Simmons won't be practicing. Wiley won't be practicing. Um, Gifford won't be practicing. Or Gibbons. Dr. Gibby won't be practicing. Gifford will be out there. That should do it. Thank Will, uh... <laughs> Charles or Tim or Mike make clear that when you're running with the ball to maybe try to slide a little bit more? Yeah, no, it's, it's been a point of emphasis going back to even starting last week. Obviously, um, needed to take the coaching points uh, a little better. But, um, you know, I just I need to make sure that I know that I'm not putting my body in harm's way. Because, you know, my best ab ability is my availability, and I have to know that. Did Jalen Ramsey say anything to you after you lowered the shoulder? Uh, yeah, we exchanged some words. I don't remember exactly what was said, though. Did, did he, did Mike said yesterday he showed you tape of, I guess, ways to slide. He hit, hit, hit or kid with you about showing yeah. you the tape of quarterbacks that got hit in those situations? Yeah, we were when we were going through the film yesterday, he popped in and said that, and the, the, the cut up this week will probably look a lot different than it did last week. Did you watch Hard Knocks last night? I didn't. Did, did it air? I didn't yeah. even know. I didn't know that they turned it around that fast. I'll have to watch it sometime this week. You got the angry uh, run scepter thing on NFL Network. So, one, I bet you never really thought you'd get that. And, two, Kyle Brandt wants to know what kind of pre-workout you're doing to get amped up like that on the sideline. <laughs> I haven't taken pre-workout in a while, probably since college max day in the weight room. But, um, no, just just juice, just from the inside. But, no, they do a great job with that. Um, Kyle's great, and um, I'm proud to have received the award. How much do you think that juice is a carryover quality that's healthy for the team, especially we saw it most vividly when you came off the sideline after the second touchdown? Yeah. What are you feeling there, and what's it mean to the team? Yeah, it's interesting because I think, like, you know, as a quarterback, as a competitor, as a leader, you hear about staying calm, cool, and collected, and there's definitely some – you know, uh, something to be said about that. And I feel like I keep myself that way a lot. Um, but when there is those times that you are able to, you know, show your emotions and, you know, this is an emotional game and uh, you can't have it bottled up all the time, um, you know, just be yourself out there and, and show those emotions and wear your heart on your sleeve sometimes. And just sometimes that's just, you can bring other guys up with you. So it's just knowing when to, when to use it and uh, being authentic with it. I think that's why it's so interesting that you can balance the two. So just take me into the mind of, Will Levis, when you're able to have those emotions after a good play or a bad play, and then you can immediately switch it to business mode on the field. Like, is that something you were kind of wired with, or how did that come about? Yeah, I think when I was younger, it was I wasn't really able to control it. So just throughout my career, like being able to just mature and, and get better in that way, and not let you know those things carry on and, and affect the the plays you have in the future. So I mean, um, a lot of the times, you know, I won't do anything. Um, Sometimes I will, you know, acknowledge a little thing here and there, even just in the midst of a drive. But it's important just to, you know, just reset and uh, and get back to that next play. Like even with Tim, we we're talking like we had that procedure penalty, and he's going crazy on the sideline and fired up. But you know, get get it out of your system, move on, and just play the next play. And I feel like we did a good job of that, you know, on Monday, um, being able to just put all the you know bad stuff we did in the first half behind us and get the win. Quarterbacks, play, quarterbacks plays in their career are often defined by their ability to succeed or not succeed in the two-minute drill. Uh, how much do you, uh, how much do you enjoy the two-minute drill, and how much you know responsibility you know goes into that, and everything being placed on your shoulders to come through in those situations? For sure. I mean, those are the you know high pressure, you know pressure cooker situations where, um, you know, it doesn't matter what you did up until that point in the game. If you're not able to get it done in that moment. Um, then it doesn't matter. So, you know, I've, I feel like we've done a great job of that going back to camp. And um, even, you know, with the reps that I got back then with, with the twos or threes or whatever it was, um, gaining confidence through the reps I got there. And then with the opportunities we've got so far um, in the two-minute drives we've had, I've been proud of how we've operated. So got to keep doing it, um, finding ways to, you know, switch it up and, 
give them different looks and uh, just continue to put points on the board in those situations. Who were some of your favorite guys to watch operate the two minute when you were growing up? I mean, I got to go with Tom. I mean, there are a lot of instances of, you know, where I was a fan of them. So thinking that they were down and out at the end of a game and even like I or I'd mentioned yesterday, but um, when I was out with these kids, like a lot of them were in bed, you know, and then they wake up the next morning and they're like, dang, like we got the win. And I remember that vividly with a couple of times with Tom and just being like, dang, how did he pull that off? So um, being able to be poised and just taking a profit and chunking down the field and not being, you know, um, too aggressive, uh, he, he did it better than anybody. That relationship that you and, and Hopkins had, how has that evolved over time, like from when you first got the starting job until now? Yeah, I think it's evolved in, in what he's expected out of me and then uh, in turn just what I can expect out of him. Um, and, and when I first started playing, it was more, it was very black and white. I think like he's a guy when you do have, or when you ha when he has developed a chemistry with his quarterback, that he's able to do things that puts himself in a better position to succeed. Um, but it, it can be a little different, and that could scare like a rookie quarterback. So that that that's something I'm just working through with him and, and understanding the different kind of variations that could happen with the different routes he's running. Um, we saw it a couple times on Monday, uh, being able to just recognize it and just stay with him and trust him and, and taking it. Um, and then continuing to understand, you know, how we're seeing coverages. Like there was a third down the other night where, sure, he's he might have been the last read in the coverage, but I got to really know, like, it's this coverage. If this player does this, I can move on and I can find him earlier and, and put us get us get us a first down opposed to you know checking it down and um, and putting it away. So uh, getting better there. He's going to keep pushing me, and uh, he's been a great you know role model and teammate for me. And that's the thing he told me. Like initially, he gave you some leeway, but now is at the point where it's like. Uh, not taking any shorts. So how has that kind of like pushed you to elevate your game or, or has it done so? Yeah, no, I mean, it just pushes me to, you know, just be better and, and prepare and take it to the next level because, um, you know, it's, there no more rookie mistakes, no more free passes for any of that uh, across the board. You know, we got a lot of young guys that are playing, but uh, we've, we've had enough reps and enough snaps at this point where uh, we can't we can't let any of that fly. And um, we know, it, you know, sometimes that does happen, but uh, it's time for us to take our games to the next level, and um, that's what we need to do. So I'm used to. to him. Well, was that actually a no wood pass? I think I just saw him last second. I, I wasn't not I wasn't not looking when I threw it, but I just kind of realized last second. But um, it was a good adjustment by him, and be able to just kind of settle uh, in that zone. Um, but it was good feel because I could feel where he was going to be, and we were able to connect on it. Well, what did you learn from the final drive in Pittsburgh, specifically that last throw? And did it help you? Uh, the situation was a little different and just with the time on the clock and I was definitely being I wouldn't have been as aggressive on that throw if I had like the minute and, or a little less than two minutes like I did on Monday night um, but I think if anything it was just taking a profit taking what they give you and uh, not not forcing anything and I thought we did a good job of that of you know if, if what they got underneath it and taking it down to Tajay and, and letting them run um, but that's what I was most proud of. Was uh, wasn't necessarily trying to force anything, even though I knew we had to get some chunks. Well, how do you go about dissecting a win like that and trying to, as Grable said, build off the good and replicate that, and then kind of scrap and learn from the bad plays? Yeah, um, it's good and bad all throughout the film. Uh, you can't value uh, one more than the other. Uh, just like you know, we're taking the bad and we're trying to correct it. Um, we're trying to use the good to give us confidence to go into this next week to let us know that you know we can do it versus you know this type of team uh, we can do it against anybody. So um, a lot of good stuff that we saw you know today in the tape that got, got all of us fired up and was cool to see. Um, but it's just important for us to use that to motivate us to work even harder to get the win again this week. There was a funny moment, I guess, after the game where Tajay was next to you trying to get your attention post game. What do you remember about that? And what's it been like kind of growing your relationship with him as you guys yeah. start your careers together? Yeah, I've been in that, I, I don't know who else has been in that situation, but I, I, it's weird. Like, I didn't feel it. Like, it, it took like a, a few taps for me to, to finally feel it. Um, but I mean, he was a guy throughout that whole game who, who was right next to me throughout all of it instilling confidence in me and 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 and, and knew that um, you know we were going to go go down and, and make it happen even after you know that fumble um, so you know his positivity uh, his work ethic um, I, I think really underrated thing about him and, and how we played the end of that game was his conditioning I think that those two two minute drives he looked like the you know 
most well-oiled player out on that field, I think, where, while some other guys in the defense were dragging around. For him to be able to get the ball in space and get those check downs and that screens, uh, a few a few catches there in huge situations and getting out of bounds and sprinting, um, that's the type of worker he is. And uh, he's a special player, and we're, we're very grateful to have him. I'm sure you've got it fixed on your phone, Will, but are, are you completely used to seeing your name auto-corrected on, on stuff? <laughs> it's, on it's, it's pretty annoying, yeah. Um, but uh, hey. They got a heck of a company. Um, they're, they're, uh, they're, I'm a big fan of their jeans. So I mean, if uh, you know, if there's anything there, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. Well, have you seen the meme, that kind of photoshopped image of you? Do you know who made that? That some of the guys were sharing. Oh yeah, no, I don't know who made it. Uh, it was pretty funny though. Um, but yeah, it's funny. I saw that all over. But um, yeah, I think we all got a kick out of that. <laughs>